All right, folks, I have something very special for you today. This right here is the Elvis unit. This is the ambulance that carried Elvis away on the day he passed away, took him from Graceland to the hospital. This ambulance, by the time you see this, it's already being shown live at the Tiger Man Museum in Memphis. So go check it out. Billy Stallings, the spa guy, the man responsible for bringing this ambulance back into the public eye and putting it into the museum. And I got a chance to interview him as he was uh, as he was cleaning it up. So I hope you enjoy the video and uh, go check out Tiger Man Museum in Memphis. About to have the reveal here of the Memphis Fire Department decal, I suppose. Thank you guys so much for staying and helping me with this. Well, thanks for telling us about the history of it. Well, it's it's an amazing story. And that's why I love this, the Elvis story, because there's so many facets to it. And and we're still finding stuff today. There's, It's like, I feel like Indiana Jones sometimes, because I'm going out and literally finding things. Yeah, look at that. It's coming right on. That's going to look good. That's going to look real good. And there was a couple of different hearses, you know, a couple of different transports. So there. I wonder why there's confusion about whether he was still alive when they put him in here. Well, because some speculate that he was alive because they were actually defibbing him. You think I should let that sit for a second? Let you spray that. They were defibbing him in this vehicle, according to Dr. Nick. And they, they gave him epinephrine, something to restart his heart. They were doing chest compressions. They were doing life-saving techniques to try to, if there was any hope, to try to save him in this vehicle. So there was also, if you want to place yourself there, there was also a lot of panic. Because imagine being uh, Joe Esposito or Dr. Nick, or I think Charlie Hodge was in this vehicle too, from my memory. Um, Ulysses Jones, Charles Crosby were the two ambulance attendants. See those guys, for instance. I mean, they had no idea when they woke up that morning that they were going to be who them. who was you yeah. know they were going to be trying to save. Yeah, yeah. The history of music as we know it changed that day, and they were right in the middle of it. Do we know what their uh, experience was? How long well, they've been? What we know, and I did a video about it, um, is that they were very silent about it. Yeah. Um, which befuddled the other fire, the other people at the fire, firehouse thought that that was weird. Um, and what I mean by that is they generally, it'd be just like us here, when you go move a hot tub and something unusual happens, the next day we're going to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Well, they never really talked about it and we're just completely silent about it. And the, the firemen all thought that that was very odd. And some people would would play that into a conspiracy. Um, I just think that maybe the family got to them because in the beginning they did do a few things, but it wasn't long before they, they shut up and didn't say anything else. And I think it may have been a thing where the family went to them and said, hey, you know, this is before, this is before, uh, what is that now that they have that you're not supposed to talk about medical stuff? And, uh, HIPAA? Yeah, this is long before HIPAA laws and, and all that kind of crap. So I think the family probably just straight up went to them and, and asked them to respect, the respect it and not, not buy into it because they know the level of, for lack of a better word, Elvis Crazy. So were these uh, these paramedics, were they uh, seasoned? Yeah, they had both been there. Um, Ulysses went on to be a state senator in the state of Tennessee. Um, Charles died in, from, from the best that I can gather, and I've tried to reach out, even reach out to the family and haven't had a whole lot of luck. They seem to not, even the family doesn't want to talk about it. But it seems that Charles... There's stories, myths, that Charles died 
being pushed out of an airplane. I don't think that that is factual. I think from what I can gather, he died in an automobile accident in South America in 1981, which would have been four years after this happened. Now, what I was trying to figure out is why was Charles Crosby in South America in 1981, and that I don't have the answer to. I've not been able to to uh, figure that out. That's cleaned up yeah, actually really, really good. Really did. I'm gonna wash this side here. This thing's cleaning better than I thought it. Yeah, was. that's really good news. It is. It is. Well, it's, it's actually pretty sharp. You though. know, I was going to say, man, that that I, I think that looks better than if you were to restore. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's you, that patina, that color, yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to. You wouldn't be able to. I don't think so. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to recreate that. And it says F-479 right there. I've never noticed that before. But I did a story in 19, in 2017, where... 40, 40 years to the day that Elvis was in this ambulance, I went to the fire department where this ambulance was stationed and I took the call at 2.33 in the afternoon and traveled back to Graceland, more or less mimicking the path of this that day. Thank you so much, Logan. You gonna be able to get out? Yes, sir. You demand no I, matter what they say. I can move that if you want.